Welcome to Cooking with Squish. Welcome to Cooking with Squish. <laughs> Today we are making a pumpkin piñata and Squish is a Dracula vampire and I am the vampire's mummy. It's all going to be depending on candy. What are we going to use for our Halloween pumpkin piñata today, Squish? Orange candy mouth, twisty and ziplock bags and ice cream cones and spatula and black candy melt and candy. Those are all of our ingredients and we're also going to be using a bunt tin today. If you have a silicone one, that would be a touch easier, but I'm going to show you how to extract a chocolate mold out of a metal, make sure that it's non-stick. And then I've got just a green tray that I'm going to be using to present my pumpkin on, because green and orange go really well together. Let's get started, Dracula. Now we should eat that and then make. I think we should make and then eat that. Let's get started. Let's get started. Can you pour the candy melts into a bunch of I certainly can. Just half the candy melts at this stage. And then Ollie's gonna use his spatula and he's gonna scrape all that orange candy melt around and all up the sides of the bunt tin. Thank you, Mr. Dracula. All right, scrape away. So when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you're really bringing that orange chocolate all the way up the sides. Get it as close to the outside edges as you can so that when you stick your two halves together, you've got a really nice kind of a seamless seam in the middle. Beautiful, beautiful job. Can, can mummy have a turn? No, I'm good at this. Dracula's very, very independent. What do you think Dracula's eat? Zombies. Dracula's eat zombies. Watch out, zombies. So once you're happy that you've got your chocolate all nice and neat and it's relatively even, you can pop that off into the fridge. Don't worry too much if you can see bits of the bunt tin through it because we're going to give it a second coat and completely cover any of those marks. This is just our first coat. Now just before you put that off into the fridge, you want to take just a knife and just sort of skim around that top edge so that you don't have any of these little splatters of chocolate hanging over because they're going to make a messy join when you join your two pieces together. All right, I'm going to put that one off into the fridge for about 15 minutes until that first coat sets. Do you think it's set by now? I think it's set by now. So now that our first coat of chocolate is done, what's next? Another coat of chocolate. All right, perfect. So I'm going to spoon the next lot of candy melt in and you're going to spread it out with the spatula. So with your second coat, it's going to set a lot quicker than your first coat because you're putting it down onto cold chocolate rather than onto a room temperature bunt tin. So you want to get it on relatively quickly and this is your opportunity to cover up any signs of that bunt tin poking through. Perfect, so once you're happy that you've got a nice smooth coat, it's all firmly up the edges, you want to take your knife again and we're just going to trim off those top edges of both the inside and the outside again so that we don't have any of that kind of chocolate splashing around the edges. And then it can go back off into the fridge for another 15 minutes. You definitely want to put that in the fridge though because the cold from the fridge, when it instantly hits that chocolate, it's going to cause it to sort of contract away from those non-stick sides and make your bunt a lot easier to get out. <laughs> Why didn't the skeleton laugh? Why? Because he didn't have his funny bone. <laughs> he didn't have his funny bone. Badum tsh. Good joke, Squish. All right, so once that's out of the fridge, you should be able to see the edges of it just ever so slightly starting to come away from the bunt tin. But that center core, that's going to want to stick. So out comes my secret weapon, my hair dryer. I'm going to give that a good shot of heat right in the middle of that center core. Literally only for like five seconds or so and that's just going to melt the very, very inside section enough that it's going to slide out. So as I turn that over, those edges should be coming away and then as I put my fingers on the sides, it should be melted enough and out comes my gorgeous piñata. You can see that sort of melted section in the middle there, so try not to overhandle it. So you're gonna need two of those halves so we can make one big piñata. So you need to repeat that process again. If you're a little bit bored with it, feel free to just make a half one. It's gonna have pretty much the same effect. Ah, 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 ah. It's nearly ready. We are so close to being done. You've done all the hard work and now you get to get onto candy stuffing. 
Yay! Yay! All right, before we stuff it with candy, I'm just going to use a little tiny bit of this orange candy melt just to affix it to the bottom of my board so it doesn't slide around when I want to transport it. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait there. Jeez, he's key. So a bit of candy melt on the board and then I'm just going to affix that bottom section of the pumpkin. All right, now it's your time to shine. Candy away. I think this would make an amazing trick or treat and the first kid to arrive at the house gets to smash it. You'd be the talk of the town. What sort of candy did you choose, Squish? Spies and gross All right, Squish, so you've got all of your little candy in there. It's looking pretty amazing. But, but we I need two of these and two of those. You can put all of those in. So with all the heavier, kind of smaller candy at the bottom, we're gonna build it up so it's coming kind of a little higher than the outside edge. Oh, did you think they were for you? Yeah. Oh, I see. Give me one for you and two of those in your little candy bowl. And now you may continue filling the rest in there. How does that sound? All right, while Squish is doing that, I'm gonna put the rest of our candy melt into a Ziploc bag so we can join this sucker together. Look, look, look. Amazing. Now it's time for the candy time. All right, now this one is going to be a mummy job, so I'm just going to snip a tip off my Ziploc bag and we're going to use this to join our two halves together. With this one, if you're going to drizzle that chocolate anyway, make sure it drizzles on the inside, not on the outside of your pumpkin base because you don't want to make a mess of the outside and it doesn't really matter if a little bit gets on the inside. Perfect. And then I'm going to pick up the second half of my piñata and pop it on top. Try to match up the little pattern from your bunt tin so that you're aligning the same patterns on the same side and your pumpkin looks even. And then you just want to take your finger, just run around that outside edge, just in case you've had any chocolate drip over to make it nice and smooth. Because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, we're going to go around and just fill in some of those little gaps around the outside edge and then smooth it back again. Now we know we're finished, it's time to put in the stem. It is time to put in the stem. Do you want to do the honours? So that's just a green ice cream cone. If you don't have access to those where you live, you can dip a regular flat bottom ice cream cone into some green candy melts to give it that nice green effect. Perfect. Don't push it too hard or you'll break through your piñata. Which I think you'd like because it's full of candy, right? That's the ulterior motive always. All right, now finally, we're going to cut up our Twizzler into some long thin strips to make kind of like the little curly green bits. So then to stick on your little kind of curly bits and so make sure they're all different lengths, you can use just a tiny bit of that leftover orange candy melt. And I just sort of stuck them in that little centerpiece and they'll hold there. And then curl them around a little and use a little bit of candy melt just to secure them so you can kind of like coil them nicely. See? So Ollie's been waiting this entire episode to get his hands on some candy and I've just said he can eat a skeleton. You want to eat it? All right, go. So while he's enjoying his skeleton, we basically decided that just as this is, it could make the perfect fall or Thanksgiving pumpkin piñata. But because we want to do this for Halloween and make it extra spooky, I've got my melted black candy melt in another Ziploc bag. I'm going to snip off a very fine tip off the corner and I'm going to paint a jack-o'-lantern face on the front half. So really this pumpkin piñata has got two great uses, but today it's going to be a gruesome, delicious, kind of semi-cute jack-o'-lantern. All right, Dracula, we did it. We made our amazing jack-o'-lantern piñata. Do you love it? Oh, yes. I want to eat it right now. You want to eat it right now? <laughs> this kid in candy. We are going to smash this open very, very shortly. I hope you guys will love making your own massive pumpkin piñatas at home. Thanks very much for watching. Happy Halloween. Woof, woof, woof. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> now it's time to here is the hammer, sir. It is time to smash. Yeah. That looks good to me. I think you're going to need a big muscle smash. Whoa! Hey, there's our candy. Ah, oh, candy. Oh, yum. What do you think? Have a taste. Tell me if it's delicious. Mm. Tastiest pumpkin we've ever had. This is a vegetable. This is not a vegetable. I'm just kidding. That is how you smash a gigantic pumpkin jack-o'-lantern piñata. Job well done, Ollie. Good job. Thanks again for watching. All right, now Squish is gone. My husband wasn't overly impressed with the amount of smash action we have going on, so I'm gonna try and outdo that last one. Better? Hello. Hello. I think I'm allergic to some of my...